The results showed that participants rated the model prisoner is less likely to commit additional crimes, even though both inmates had the same likelihood of reoffending based on the information that had been presented. So when you think about that, this is another great example of how this demonstrates confirmation bias and how it influences perceptions and judgments even in situations where there is clear and objective information available. The Perspective View podcast by CC America LLC is a show dedicated to discussing diversity, culture, and context beyond the boardroom. DEI today is more than a buzzword on a billboard. It is creating safe spaces for varying perspectives, ideas, and experiences without fear of being canceled because you don't conform. Let's tear down the walls together and build a new foundation with an open mind and understanding that the world revolves around the context of perspective. Hello, and welcome to a live taping of the Perspective View podcast. I am your host, and today's TPV tidbit, which stands for the Perspective View, is really to focus on how confirmation bias impacts everyday decision making. So if this is your first time tuning in, the Perspective View podcast is all about discussing diversity beyond the boardroom. So let's get into it. When you think about confirmation bias, it is a cognitive bias that affects the way in which we process and interpret information. It is our human tendency to seek out and interpret information in a way that confirms a pre-existing belief or hypothesis while ignoring or discounting information that contradicts those said beliefs or hypotheses. So in other words, we tend to favor information that confirms what we already believe. And we may be more apt to disregard information that challenges those beliefs. So when you think about confirmation bias, I like to think of it similar to stereotypes. When we stereotype other individuals, it can have an impact on how we make decisions and also how we understand facts based on that said stereotype. Research has shown that people are more likely to accept information that supports an existing belief and less likely to accept information that challenges them. Hence the reason when we think about change in our society, it is hard. It is hard for us to change as individuals sometimes, let alone trying to encourage someone else to consider another perspective and or point of view. So this confirmation bias can lead to a distorted view of reality because as we become more and more entrenched in our own beliefs, regardless of the evidence we may receive, we still may believe whatever it is that we believed initially. So here's an example of how confirmation bias can impact decision-making, for instance, as it relates to politics. So when you think about politics, individuals relate with a particular political party or maybe an ideology. They will then seek out information that confirms said beliefs, but they may also reject information that contradicts those said beliefs. So they may have a belief about, say, for instance, there's a the hot topic um, with regard to abortion. They may have a belief about it, but because it contradicts their political party's beliefs, then they may reject any information that is contradictory to that political party, for instance. So when you think about it in our political environments, it can lead to a polarized political environment where people on opposite sides of an issue may have a completely different understanding of the facts. And so and there are so many topics that can fall under this same category, even when you think about the topic of gun control. There are ideas and perspectives on both sides of the fence, but individuals may be less likely to listen to the opposing side of an issue because it doesn't align with their political party or ideology. Another example is in scientific research. Scientists can sometimes fall prey to confirmation bias because they may have a preconceived notion of what their research will find. So for instance, they may be more likely to interpret the data in a way that confirms whatever they believed their hypothesis to be. So when you think about research findings, sometimes it can be flawed or hinder scientific progress depending on the individual and their belief that the results should be a certain way. 
And so another study that was conducted by Stanford in the late 1970s, in 1979, they asked different participants to read about two fictional prison inmates, one of whom was described as a model prisoner. The other was described as a troublemaker. Think about the media. Participants were then asked to rate the likelihood that each inmate would commit additional crimes in the future. The results showed that participants rated the model prisoner as less likely to commit additional crimes, even though both inmates had the same likelihood of reoffending based on the information that had been presented. So when you think about that, this is another great example of how this demonstrates confirmation bias and how it influences perceptions and judgments, even in situations where there is clear and objective information available. In this case, both prisoners had the same likelihood of re-offending. However, the person labeled as a troublemaker was perceived to more likely recommit a crime as opposed to the other person who was labeled as a model prisoner. Interesting, right? And another example that I tend to utilize often, especially when I try to explain this concept to individuals, is the fact that if, say, for instance, I am a waitress and I see particular guests coming in of a certain demographic group and I have a perception about that demographic group that they don't tip. So me as the waitress, if I decide to give them poor service and they don't tip, was the reason that they didn't leave me a tip because of my poor service or because of the belief that I held about the demographic group that I thought wouldn't tip anyway. And so you see how it becomes a vicious cycle and we just continue to go in that vicious circle and or cycle until we get to know people on an individual level and we get to sit back and really understand where others are coming from, listen to their perspectives, listen to their points of view, because everyone has their own set of experiences. And so if we are individuals that do not want to let go of our cognitive bias, if we want to believe certain stereotypes and hold them close to us, then it will be difficult for anyone to come along and change how we believe because we don't want to challenge our belief or our bias. So this is just a quick TPV tidbit just to remind us that confirmation bias is a cognitive bias. It's how we think. It affects how we process and interpret information. And so bias can have a significant impact on how we make decisions and or understand facts, which oftentimes will lead to a distorted view of reality. So it is important for us as individuals to be aware of our own biases and actively seek out information that will challenge our beliefs so that we can make informed decisions and have a more accurate understanding of the world around us. Because after all, the world revolves around the context of perspective. Have a great week. Thank you for tuning in to the Perspective View podcast. Please be sure to subscribe, like, and share the show with others. We value your feedback, so please be sure to rate the show and leave us a comment so we know how we're doing. Also, this helps us share a message with more individuals around the world regarding different experiences and perspectives.